As a WPF developer, one of the biggest challenges we have is navigation. And unless you're using something like Prism, navigation can probably be the most complicated feature of a WPF application. But what about the web? What do we do in Angular? Well, luckily for us, navigation is built into Angular. Angular makes it really easy to implement navigation. How easy? Well, let's find out. Roll the intro. In this sample, we're going to implement navigation for two buttons. The first button is going to navigate to a user's component. The second button is going to navigate to a product's component. And as you can see on line 12, we have to find a default sample component to be loaded when the sample application launches. Let's start by opening up our index.html. Now, most routing applications should add a base element to the head tag of their file. This tells the router how to compose navigation URIs. In this case, the app folder is the application root. So we're going to set the href value as a forward slash shown here. Now, before we can actually implement any navigation, we have to have something to navigate to. So let's go ahead and start by adding our users and products components. We're going to open up the terminal and type ng, g for generate, c for component, users, and then we're going to type ng, g for generate, c for component, products. Now that we have both our users and products components created, let's implement the navigation. The first step is we need to open up our app.module.ts file. Here, we're going to start by adding an import for the router module. And this can be found in Angular slash router. Next, we want to come into the imports array of the ng module decorator. Here, we're going to define the router module dot for root and within the parentheses of for root, we're going to define an array of routes. Now, creating a route is pretty straightforward. We're going to start by creating a new path. And this path is going to provide a URL identifier, if you will, of where we're going to navigate when this is entered into the URL. What I mean by that is, for example, let's say whenever we type products into the URL, we're going to navigate to the component products component. And whenever we type users, we're going to navigate to the component, the users component. Now that we have our routes defined, the next step is we have to define what's called the router outlet. So to do this, I'm going to open up my app.component.html. And here on line 12, where we have our sample component, I'm going to uh, delete that. And we're going to define our router outlet. The router outlet is a directive from the router library that is used like a component. It acts as a placeholder that marks the spot in the template where the router should display the components for that outlet. So now that we have defined our router outlet, if we go back to our app.module.ts, we'll see that we have defined our two paths. Let's test this by typing in one of our paths into our address bar. Let's start with the products. So we'll say localhost 4200 slash products. When we do this, we will see that our component is now navigated into the router outlet. In this case, product works. We can do the same thing for users. We type in users, and now we can see that users work. Pretty easy. Well, that works and that's fine and dandy, but we don't expect our end users to type in manually the path that they want to navigate to, correct? Now what we're going to do is when a user clicks the button, we're going to navigate to the specific component. To do that, we're going to use what's called the router link directive. In this case, we're going to specify that when this button is clicked, we're going to navigate to the slash users path. And we will do the same thing for our products slash products. We'll save our application. And now we will click the buttons. We navigate to user, users work, navigate to products, products worked, and our back history works as expected as well. It's that simple. Now that we know just how easy it is to implement navigation in an Angular application, it's time. That's right. It's time to announce the winner for the one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate. And the winner is Jesus Padilla. Congratulations, my friend, you are the winner. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license. Would you like to enter for a chance to win a one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000 while at the same time learning to take your WPF skills to the web with Angular? Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and you'll be entered into the next drawing. Good luck and I'll see you next time.